So, it is currently June 2021. I have spent my entire second year of uni um, in lockdown and I spent the second half of my first year in lockdown. So, so far 75% of my uni experience has been in lockdown and spending so much of that time in art school, like forcing myself and obviously everyone else here is felt the same way, but force myself to produce creative things while being stuck inside with no creative stimulus has made me lose my mind just just a smidge. And it, in some ways I think it has killed my love for photography as that was like my main love at one point. So my project for the summer is just to create an image that's entirely mine and isn't made for university or for a grade or for my degree. And I want to go back and reuse um, elements from past photos. I want this image to be entirely made up of my own already photographed content and elements from old photos as um, pain bad, no want to take photo. <laughs> so I want to go back to all these old shoots where I guess I had an original, like I started off with an idea and had to change it for the brief. So I want to take all these images and just make something else and make something that is part of my vision that I don't have to explain why I made any choices because a lot of the time it's just I made a decision because it looks cool there's no other reason I want to create an image without having to overthink symbolism or colour theory or lighting or even make it look good so I'm going to make something entirely for myself I've there's something that I started on I think last month around the deadlines that I'm enjoying and I think I want to make it into a little series so I'm going to make more but as I've got some grades back from uni I'm feeling a little more inspired that the stuff I made with no creativity will that's <laughs> that made no sense but I'm, I've got good grades I got a first and two one so I'm feeling more reassured that stuff I made with no creative inspiration whatsoever can be okay and I'm hoping that stuff that I can make completely for myself and it can be whatever I want will give me the same feeling as a first. <laughs> so I'm trying to regain some creativity. I'm hoping to do a lot of things that I, I just want to do over the summer, not for uni. And it would be great if some of it ends up working out, so I'm going to slack off next year. But. <laughs> I'm doing things for myself. So I'm doing the screen recording of this on Streamlabs because I thought that'd be the easiest way to do it apart from when I click recording it sometimes doesn't say if it's recording which is an issue but I want to show you my editing process slightly different to how I usually do. Usually I'll just show you like in rough steps that are chunks of little steps but now I want to try and do it properly. So. I made an image. Can we see the image? Here is the image. And I think before I go into the editing process for this, sorry I look state by the way, I really don't care. But before I go into how I made this, I just want to talk about the inspiration. Because what I did differently to how my other images are, usually I will go in with a plan and I would shoot new images and base images and go from there. But for this, um, I've been struggling a lot with my health recently, so I haven't been feeling capable of going to shoot new images. So I went back and took some from my older works. So we're going to go through, I'm going to start off with my inspiration for this shoot. This series is what I made in my first semester at university in my first year, and I called it Growing Pains because it was about, in many ways, of me growing up into this new stage in my life and the growing pains of me finding myself as a person and as an artist. And the image I was most inspired by, you can see this one here. You might be able to see my cursor, I hope so. But it is Growing Pains 14. And it's this image where I used um, a stretched out piece of blue tack with like an HSL layer to make it skin coloured, which is um, probably one of the first like props I used in the shoot. And it was a, it was a, significant time for a very experimental part of my editing process and this entire series was that experimental thing so I keep coming back to this um, stretchy blue tack skin getting pulled apart idea 
and I think you can kind of see something like it in entertainment. Um, this one's pulled up because I used I use these trees in this image. I never finished this image, but I use these trees in what I've done that I'm showing you today. But I come back to also this image of bodies being pulled apart a lot. Well, not a lot, but this is an image that I was very proud of at the time. I'm still proud of now. But it's, some, it's an idea that I come back to and I was never fully sure why. Um, I don't have the original blue tech images I used for the Growing Pains picture, so here is just a new folder of blue tech that I took. And I wanted options, I wanted like fully stretched out bits that are flaking off, bits of gaps in, I wanted variation. So I just took a load of blue tech photos because I wasn't fully sure. When I was thinking of this image, I didn't make a proper plan, I just thought I want there to be some stretchy skin in there. But I wasn't sure what kind, and in the final edit I did um, end up using a lot of options. The next thing I want to show is... This is an image that I talked about in, I guess it's my last video that I posted, about doing this little archive project for uni. And this is an image that I um, started work on, never fully finished, but it was for that project. And this is what I basically just nicked the background for, oops, she's gone, she's gone. But I nicked the background for this, for the new image. So I wanted a lot of not just taking the photos of myself from old images, I wanted to just recycle elements I used. Because in this next image I'm going to pull up, um, where are we? I'm getting used to this second monitor thing. Um, come across, come across. Because in, these are the images I used for myself in this new one. But when I was editing this, I basically na just nabbed this background from a different photo I'd done. So I have experimented with reinterpreting and just stealing elements of my work before, but I wanted to do it again. So here is my Photoshop document. Um, I'm going to talk about this a bit differently as how I would for other images. We're going to start at um, the bottom of the layers, rather than going through a proper step by step, but this is the rough starting point. So this that you can see right here is where this image basically started off. I did this in maybe like two hour sessions over a, a, like maybe five days in total, not consecutive. There have like months gaps in between. But this is when I was experimenting. I saw this the image of myself from that fairy photo shoot lounging on a rock. And I thought, you know, I like this. I like this shoot. And I didn't really like the image that I made from it. So I thought I'd, I'd try again. So here's a picture of me lounging. It's on this throne which is a stock image and it's got this bit of blue tack just stretchy it's got a layer mask that blends my hand a bit i decided that i was going to color color correct as i went rather than going back and doing it all at once because usually my process i like to put together the composite first and then go in and color correct things but i thought this is going to have a lot of layers so we're just going to do it as we go so on the throne we have this layer that turns the red seat bit on it um, more blue, which you can't really tell, but this bit is blocked out in the final image. And we had to darken and desaturate and make it more match my skin, which I turn the highlights down a lot in camera raw, so it's not very, it's very low contrast, it's very dulled down. So we had to dull this throne down just a little bit. Here's the layer of myself. Here's a, what does this curve layer do? This curve layer, I think, mm -hmm, it brightens up my face a bit because when here I made the blue tech match, but it wasn't quite right, so I had to brighten my face just just a little bit to make it more even. The next day, where are we? I added and I added another me, and I ignore how the face blurred out. That's so the blue tech blends a little bit better. But I realised as a self-portrait artist, there is a bit of narcissism in there. And I try and deny it as much as I want about, oh, I don't like my face, I don't like looking at myself. But using yourself as your own muse and your own canvas, it, it's a bit narcissistic. <laughs> but mm -hmm. a lot of this is just adding things, layer masking out the backgrounds. And a lot of it is also adding blue tack. Let's turn these off. Adding this, can I show you this? We had, I decided to colorize it. So like all the shadows would be the same color overall. As you can see, it's very 
um, like purpley and bluey and white. So we wanted to, let's go back over here. Yeah, we had to make, I tried to, yeah, I colorized it. I made it more of a reddy skin color tone and I had to desaturate it because it was looking a little bright and darken it down so it matched. And I also had to add the curve layer shadow to blend my face a little bit more. I wanted to get these colours right as I did them, otherwise I would have a lot of work. You can see there's a selection of layers here. And I think, what's this? Oh, yeah, I added a stretchy bit on my foot because I found, ignore this bit, this is a cutout for my hand in the next person, but I did this bit. So I had this bit of blue stuff that curved around my foot nicely and I like how it blends in a lot. There's nothing more I can say to that, I just like how it looks. And after this I started building in a background. I started off with a nice, a nice grey. I do love a grey. And then I added in this like grass, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> this grass stock image that comes up in pretty much every Every single one of my images, recent ones, that you see have grass in, is this image. And I love the cohesiveness of it. And it has pretty much also got these same layers. Cause I, I don't like working with green, so I tend to make it more yellow. And I don't like how bright that is if you make it dark. So I don't want a lot of the image, I don't want the background to be a point of focus at all. I go for these very bland backgrounds, because I want me to be the focus. But I went in and I started building this background because throughout this entire image until pretty much the last day of working on it I had no clue what I wanted the background to be. I think at one point I was going for more like a ballroom, throne room-esque thing with the throne. But I remember that my original intention for the images of myself was to be a very slightly fairy-esque. So I wanted to go for like a little fairy grove kind of feel in the end. So. After this, we, as I had some grass there, I thought, you know, we've got to start adding in shadow for the throne. Um, these specific shadows that go around um, my feet and around my body. And this is unrelated. So yeah, I had to start adding in the shadows and the definition here to kind of add realism. I know it's not going to look fully realistic as like there's no dents in the grass where there's pressure on it and things like that but it's just adding something so you can just suspend your disbelief for a minute and like this is my reality now and yet again we have ooh, uh, this is adding some shadow to the throne so I can lounge on it a little nicer then we have me again this one here is the original from the previous shoot. This one here is slightly different because I took so many of them with a combination of flat hand and like finger and single finger just to like tilt up that chin a bit. So I went with a flat hand for this one but the original is a finger but th this picture here is the one I used. I think it's like I took so many of this pose and this is the only good one. So yeah I added this person in, I added some shadows. Where did I add the blue tack in for you? Was it here? Mm-hmm. Here. You can see some colours. Then after this it is pretty much... We're going to go back to the bottom. Building up this background. This background, it, I made it on Art Breeder, which if you don't know is um, not randomly generated, but AI generated art made out of other art, which is made out of other art and so on. And you can customise it with like like how many trees you want, how much water you want, what colour you want. So this is a very green, slightly bluey green foresty one that I made. Which I used in the image where I tried to make myself a tree. But as I didn't end up posting that anywhere, I thought I'd use it again here. So I committed to the foresty fairy vibe at this point. Then I added in these trees from another shoot that I didn't post. Tried to overall just darken the background a bit because I thought it was getting a bit busy at this point there's a lot of detail there so I wanted to bring the focus back to myself even though this is um, something you can't miss and then again I thought I want to bring in more of the purpley blue tones from the clothing as I don't want at this point I did not have the will to go back in 
and edit the clothing. So I brought in like this flower field that I've used before just to add, yeah you can see it. It's on a low opacity, it's on 40%. You can still see the grass coming through but it just does add a little, not really a pop of colour but more cohesion throughout the image. Okay so finally at the top we have a couple little more detail things. So I wanted to blend these like silly bits of Butak into the ground a bit more. But not really into the ground, more into shadow. Because I couldn't work out how to blend them without simply just, I guess, actually adding in more grass to go around it. But I I think that thing is still a, a bit out of my skill set just a smidge. I'm going to work up to that. So we just have these little curved layers just to darken it into the shadows a bit more. And especially if you add a vignette, it does disguise it a bit more. And to finish off my image, as I do for all my images, this one oil paint texture, which is the exact same one I use everywhere. And I'd like that you can see what it actually does in here. As you can kind of see in the little thumbnail, it's warm toned at the top and cool toned at the bottom. So it does bring in the warmth of the woodiness and the skin colours and then the coolness of these blue flowers in the grass. And I like the emphasis and it adds texture because I want all my images to look very art inspired. Maybe not through like paintings. This, I was going to say it gives me a bit of a renaissance vibe but it doesn't. Colour wise it does, it's more of like a baroque. Maybe. Maybe a bit more mannerism. So I added this paint texture. I also added it again but flipped and only on the outside. So the black is not there. Only on the outsides. So I thought it still looks a little bland. And I want just a little extra texture. And the final step that isn't in here is that I opened up my image in the Photoshop Express app, which if you've seen one of my videos before, you will know that I do love the Photoshop Express app. Photoshop Express app. I find it very good. I use it um, pretty much exclusively for colors because none of my screens are color calibrated. So when I open this on my phone, it usually makes skin tones look very saturated and very orange. So I go into the, the H cell sliders and just bring down the saturation on the oranges. I might make greens slightly more yellowy or slightly more bluey, depending on how I'm feeling. I think I went more yellowy for this. And I think I turned down the highlights just a little bit. I would have added another vignette because when I open this in the app, like on the screen, it, it looks quite, it, it looks very visible. But when I open this on my phone screen, it doesn't look like anything, sir. So I add, so I use the Photoshop Express app for vignettes and making me less orange. So the last minute or so of that clip corrupted, which was basically just outro, so I'm just going to do it again now. I am wearing the same t-shirt as yesterday, so it's fine. But I want to say thank you for watching this video if you got to the end. It was, I guess, a nice change of pace for me to talk about my editing process. Even though it wasn't in full detail of why I use certain tools and why I make certain decisions. But I think most of my decisions are just, it looks cool. I like it. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this video. I don't know if I'll do anything like this again in the future because it's time consuming. But again, I did enjoy it. I will see you next time. Bye.